So good Hello. morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So good morning, everyone. I'm Michelle Oliver. I am the founder and CEO of Expitality and your host for Talk About TV. And today, I am absolutely delighted to bring you John Griffiths. I, I should be reading this because I just skipped something. But Talk About TV, in case you don't know us, we talk about all things experiential outdoor hospitality with an emphasis on experiential, on outdoor, and on hospitality. <laughs> All three of those, because those are the things that really change people's lives, and we believe change the world. So today, I am delighted to welcome John Griffiths, and John is the founder of Outbound Kitchen, a unique company that pairs his creative culinary skill with his 20 years in F&B. You've been involved with concept development and multi-unit operations, and now John is bringing his expertise to experiential outdoor hospitality, which is very lucky for us because this changes everything in this space. So welcome, John. Thank you Thanks. for being here with me today. Today is kind of an experiential outdoor interview <laughs> on this side. I know. I didn't get the memo. I need to get outside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just can't. I can't stand being inside. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. And um, we're really going to focus today for anyone who's watching this on the value of experiences, right? And I thought I would just kind of toss it to you and let you speak a little bit to the idea of the value of F and B as an experience, rather than a uh, like a ice chest full of foil wrapped breakfast burritos. <laughs> Well, Sorry. that is truly an experience also. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is. On its own yeah. side. Well, you know, yeah. I, I think that when I think about um, you know, how F&B really impacts um, opportunities in outdoor and experiential hospitality, the first thing I think of isn't even, you know, financial. It's about the interaction with the customer, right? And when you have a food and beverage program, you know, in your operation, you immediately increase the touch points that you have with your guests exponentially. You know, you're going to have people that are going to be interacting with your customers, you know, on the hourly, you know, in, in, in these facilities. And, you know, these people are trained in, you know, hospitality. They're trained not just in like, you know, how to provide them, you know, towels and so forth, but to anticipate their needs, to interact with them to create an experience that is, you know, measurable, you know, and authentic. And I think that's really what people look for when they come to outdoor and experiential, you know, destinations is that authenticity. You know, there's hotel resorts every part of the world, you know, but people come to these, you know, experiential opportunities because they want something that's a little more intimate, authentic, you know, um, and not part of that normal, um, you know, hospitality or hotel type atmosphere. And I think that you know, developing an authentic food and beverage program really can benefit that a lot. Yeah, so let's just talk kind of organically about this. And I'm not meaning to gloss over all of John's history here, um, but you've been all over the space. And you guys, anybody who's interested, you can go to his LinkedIn profile. You can search and find interviews with him because he's kind of a hot commodity right now because of your understanding of the space and bringing it to us. What have you seen? I'm kind of going off our, our, our timeline or our agenda already, but because um, this is what's coming to my mind. What have you seen when you came into this outdoor hospitality space? What's the biggest gap that you think is missing that you're filling? Well, I, I think it's that connection to, you know, providing people more than just um, a service when it comes to food and beverage, right? I think that a lot of operators in the space um, tend to think of food and beverage as just like, let's fill the fridge with things people might need. You know, let's give them, you know, the bare minimum of what they could expect. And I think that there's so much more to be achieved and so much more value to derive from food and beverage than just, you know, giving people, you know, hamburgers and hot dogs in the refrigerator or, you know, ketchup and mustard on the shelves, you know, there's so mm -hmm. much more that you can, you know, provide for them. 
And we see that right now, like food tourism is coming to outdoor hospitality right now. I mean, yeah. the KOA survey I read this year says 36% of people are seeking food tourists, food tourism as part of their experience. And that was a number two trend overall, you know, and these yeah. are campers. These aren't just clampers. These are people that are coming from all walks and all levels of the market to experience the outdoor destinations. And they want mm -hmm. good food when they're there, you know? So, right. you know, we see also that like, you know, people are willing to spend more and travel more. That same survey showed that people are willing to spend $300 more per trip on average, and they're willing to travel 140 miles more to find a destination that has quality food and beverage uh, within it. So like people are looking for these things and it's, it's time to, to meet the guests where they're at, you know? I love that. It's so true. We are educated. We are savvy there's money to spend and even when there's not food is a priority like if you're on a budget or whatever people have their own special diets and we know what we like we know what we want and we're used to having it right so Absolutely. let's talk about some of those touch points i know that um i recently was at it was a huge like convention resort place in florida and the first thing that I wanted when I walked into that hotel wasn't there. So I was like, I'd been traveling. I came on the, I guess I got an Uber and that was an ordeal. You know, you're coming in from whatever your travel experience is. And I was just thinking Pellegrino or like sparkling something with lime. So what are the touch, that would have been a number one touch point where they could have made a difference in my world, right? But instead I had to walk across this great big giant lobby and wait at the desk until someone showed up. <laughs> and it was a really nice hotel. I mean, it was a resort. So talk to me a little bit about how you address touch points in outdoor hospitality. What do you see as like the first opportunity? Well, I mean, the first opportunity could be as simple as, like you said, like having some of the things in the accommodation for guests, right? You know, people are coming in, you know, they don't know exactly what to expect. So from that first moment, hey. if you can, if you're trying to you know, make an impression on your guests and they show up in the tent or the cabin or whatever accommodation type you have, and there's a little food and beverage sitting there for them that's complimentary, that's an incredible, you know, expression of welcome, you know, like you don't know how long or how far they've been traveling, but most of the times these destinations require more than just getting out of the airport and catching a transfer, you know, like you have to make right. an effort to get there, you know, and sometimes you might not have time to stop to load up your, your cooler or whatever it might be. So being able to have something like that, is just really great. But I'm going to tell you one story. This is this one. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to like, this is not my, um, my, my little stick here, but I had a conversation with a client recently um, and we were talking about, you know, just the, the elevation of experience that this gives that, that food and beverage can really have on guests. And he mm -hmm. broke it down really simply. And he said, you know, the hours of the day when people are dining, right. Let's just say dinner, right. At the end of the day, like people come to these spots a lot of times because there's destinations they want to see nearby a national park, lots of wilderness. They want to be active, but the hours you pay for, right? As someone who visits a glamping destination, a customer, right? You're paying for those hours between like, you know, 5 and 8 p.m. when the sun's starting to set. You've got, you know, whether you're nestled in one of those like sandstone canyons in Utah or, yeah. you know, atop a hill in, in Texas Hill Country, like those are the hours you pay for. Why do you want to get back in your car and drive out and try and find food? Or why do you want to try, you know, and as an operator, why do you want guests to leave during that period of time, that's when the memories are made, right? Those are the hours that people pay the premium for. So providing food and beverage, you know, it doesn't have to be a restaurant, but having opportunities for people to stay on property, to purchase on property and to give them a quality experience, whether that's retail combined with, you know, some outdoor cooking facilities, or maybe it is some type of quick, fast or full service, you know, um, restaurant type operations. You want to create that connection with your guests. You want them to sit down, reflect on the day on your property, right? You want them to exactly. build that interaction, you know? Yes. I love that. And that's what you're calling the golden hour. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that that's it. Yeah, right? I that's love the that. golden hour, right? Those that. are the hours it you pay for when you go. Like, I think about it. Like, yeah. I wake up early in the morning. And sure, sunrises are fantastic, too, right? Why, why would you want to yeah. have to wake up first thing in the morning and go, oh, I'm hungry. Let's get out of here. We got to go get food. No, you want to wake up, right. have a cup of coffee or tea, grab something really light to eat maybe before you go out and be active. You know, like, the, the bare minimum to me is just bridging those kind of buffers, morning services and evening services, right? That really can you know impact the guest experience. They're, they're mostly going to all be out during the day, you know, at most of these destinations, right. but giving them options early in the morning as simple as coffee and tea and maybe, you know, local pastries that are baked, you know, and brought on site and, and, and then something in the evening, whether that's again, like retail options that are out there or, you know, all the way to full service. It just really has an exponential impact, not just on the bottom line, right? There's plenty of data out there that shows that if you provide food and beverage services, your ADR ceiling can lift significantly, right. you know, um, people will travel for it. Absolutely. I love this. And I, I know a lot of um, people are aware of this because of all the resources and education that are out there, but so few people really take into account the power of story and in my mind, like I work with clients a lot on this, like the story, the brand, you know, the story brand and all of that. And when I think about food, that's where the, what we're really doing is inviting these people in to kind of be the hero of their own story, right? So they get to come and they get to have their adventures and then they come back. And I love what you're saying about, it's kind of like the memories, and the emotional tie that they have to the property. And that's where the stories will also come from. So you don't want it just to be that they hike the Grand Canyon or whatever, but that they did come back and then they have those intimate, emotional, it's connection, right? That's what drives all of us. Like, so what was that adventure like? And, and we know that food is the way it's like, I don't know, it's going to sound so corny, but you're, you're the corny culinary chef so you know food is a story it's um it's the way to the the connection of the body and the heart and the soul and and then it can carry the the story of your brand right and it's always educating like when you said local um croissants or whatever that's a whole different experience than oh there's a I don't know what they call it, like a breakfast bar or something with 1200 things. No, you get a really exquisite croissant that has a story behind it. Right. So Absolutely. powerful, yeah. emotional. Yeah. I mean, that's what people want. They want an authentic experience. They want, they're coming to whatever corner of the globe this is to experience what life is like there, what the interaction with the natural environment and the people are. So they want to yeah. eat the food that's produced there. They want to experience that, you know, like that is a yeah. real thing, you know, having a locally sourced menu, it doesn't have to be big. I mean, I can, I, I, this isn't the yeah. kind of podcast where I feel like for like stating numbers, but I mean, I got a ton of them back here, but you I can, love you know, how good you are at that, John, all your stats, go ahead, share well, them. People, we great. found <laughs> that people are, uh, you know, guests are really happy with menus that are over 40% smaller than they might normally dine in. So you don't need a lot of yes. options. You just need a few quality options for people, exactly. local options, connect them to where they are, to your story. Like there's nothing that tells a better story than a server explaining like, oh, well, our little beet salad here, these beets come from a farm, you know, down the road and we've got a local creamery that makes the goat cheese, you know, about a hundred miles away. And this is just really fantastic. We're happy to share it with you right now. I mean, I just, you know, it's fantastic, Everything. right? And if you, you find a local beekeeper, you know, you sell some local honey, like, you know, like you can, yeah. there's so many little things that you can do that are, you know, they're commonplace in restaurant world right now in all walks, in all areas, you know? Um, yeah. and, and from an operational point, we have really exploded in the last few years because a lot of chefs and, and, you know, hospitality business owners have moved out of big cities since the pandemic. And they're in these smaller towns, you know, in the St. George's, you know, in the, like the Aspens and the, um, the rifles and all these other small towns building these small businesses. So there's a, there's even more opportunity yeah. to build these connections now than there was five or 10 years ago. Yes. You know, people are seeking meaning 
Mm -hmm. right? And they want to feel something. So everything you said addresses that, you know, like what, what does this mean? And when you can provide meaning and emotion and an experience that expands someone, and you can do that with a meal and it's delightful. So I love that. Okay. So talk that's, to me. I'm, I'm going to jump to one thing. Cause that's okay. not yeah, yeah. Jump, Cause that's what we, we use exactly your last phrase where you said like it adds, right? Oh. We use the phrase additive, right? And have you ever been on a vacation where you go somewhere and say, Oh, you know, it was really amazing. Like the views were fantastic. We saw these great things and the food was okay. Like that, <laughs> that's subtractive, uh, right? In your mind, terrible. you're like, okay, well, it yeah. was good, but it was still good enough because the food removed from that experience, right? So we want our food and beverage to be uh, additive. It doesn't have to be exceptional. It doesn't necessarily have to be the reason people travel there, but it needs to be additive. It needs to be something like, you know, we went there. Oh my gosh, it was our first time to, you know, Yellowstone and it was magnificent. And the place we stayed at, the tents were beautiful and so well appointed. Oh, and they had these amazing croissants in the morning. Like that's it. Yeah. That's, that could be Ex enough. Oh, I love because that. Because it's added exactly. to the experience, right? Right. It, so and it is to your, I, I love that. And it also yeah. to your earlier point where hospitality is anticipating yeah. what that guest secretly desires before they ever even know it right and every time you can provide a little moment that's like you were saying oh and oh and yeah and by the way the breakfast and there was something like they it was freshly squeezed orange juice like that's the difference right it's yeah, so what, simple exactly. it's so yeah. tiny and so everything yeah mm -hmm. okay so let's talk about uh providing premium outdoor cooking solutions because some of these people um depending on the resort they come back and and they might have been i don't know fishing or hunting or <laughs> you know there's all kinds of variations on the theme of what experiential means so if they want to cook at their at their site some people do some people don't but they like the idea of maybe being cooked for i don't know talk to me about that the options yeah so obviously I'm a restaurant person. So we love to kind of talk yeah. about that full service experience, but there are a lot of opportunities in outdoor hospitality where you can find, you can meet your guests where they're at. Like you said, they're active, they're a little more self-sufficient, you know, and you want to provide an experience where they're, they're involved in that. And, you know, we've done some projects over the years where we, you know, bring in chefs to lead kind of experiential dinners where they lead the guests in cooking their own meal over live fire or a grill or whatever, yeah. you know, and the guest is part of that experience. It's communal. And that, you know, that process has led us into like, well, how do we ensure that we get good quality cooking equipment to these locations? Because that's really important, yeah. you know, like it's great to have, you know, open fire cooking for people, but you have to wait 30 minutes to like get the wood ready, you know, to you have coals right. to cook on. <laughs> you got to know how to maintain it. And I'm a chef and been one for many years. And, and that is a task in itself, right? So we partnered a while back with Isola, which is an outdoor kitchen company. And most of this stuff to date, it's, it's pretty much like you go to Home Depot if you're a developer and you pick out some, some cheap little yeah, grill right. and you put it in your properties. Or you have to go this route through, a, you know, a three-tier retail system here in the U.S. where you spend, you know, 20 grand a piece for some really premium grills. And we found mm -hmm. this partnership with Isola and they were, they jumped on board when we started explaining what outdoor hospitality is, what we're trying to do with food and beverage, because nobody's going at it from the professional kind of uh, wholesale mindset that we are, where we're going to yeah. put these into resorts, partner with resort operators to do this. And, and these things are just fantastic. They're all like, you know, aluminum, marine grade aluminum. They don't rust. The grills are, for a professional chef, these things are fantastic. And what this does is it provides an opportunity, whether you're going to build something like communal in the center of your property where guests can kind of utilize it when they need to themselves. But these things have like really great quality, you know, stovetop burners on them. They have obviously the grills that are gas fired. They, they all run on propane. They're just yeah, you know, they last forever. They look beautiful. Mm. Um, and people can come in a couple of clicks and they start cooking, right? So you give them options. Like maybe you just stock your um, your lodge or, you know, um, your retail spot with just, you know, good quality local foods, a few steaks, some chicken, things like that, where people can kind of come in and shop. And then you give them this tool, right? 
And then if you want to yeah. do some dinners once a week or a couple times a month, you can hire a local chef and they come in and they can use that stuff and do magic with it, right? Because they know, you know, they can come in with from their prepped site and they come in and deliver a really exceptional experience for your guests. They can make a reservation. You can book this stuff in advance. I mean, the, the ones we do, they all book in advance. Um, and we try to get them to book when they reserve the actual site so that your partner in this has, you know, has kind of the, the funds in place and they've got the commitment. But this just provides yeah. an exceptional experience. You know, people interact with each other. That's the other thing we were talking about earlier, that when people are, are dining together, right, in these settings, they're mm -hmm. compact, right? They're next to each other. Right. And they're all talking about the day, right? And that was one of the best right. things I've always liked about some of these experiences. You're like, oh, hey, where did you do today? You know, oh, we went here. Right. We went on this hike. Oh, we found this little, like, really beautiful waterfall. If you go out, you know, when you go out tomorrow, they share these experiences. And again, this is additive, right? It amplifies the experience that the guests are having, you know? So whether you put these grills at the, at the tent sites, you know, or the cabin sites, or you put them in a larger communal setting, you're going to create an opportunity for them to, again, stay on your property during those peak hours, let them be exactly. there during sunset experience what you know, as an operator, right? You found, you spent all this time researching this location, or you've loved it for many years let them see the same thing, right? They, you don't want them to just wake up, hop in the car, go get breakfast, do their thing and come back after the sunset just to jump back in the, the tent, right? Like you want them to spend some time there. So give them the reason to do that. Oh, that's wonderful, John. I, I just, I really appreciate how deeply you understand the guest journey <laughs> and, and how you're so passionate about it as you should be. And it really is so important. These are the, the areas that people tend to neglect. Like you can think of it as, oh no, because you know, it's, there are a lot of moving pieces and parts when you're building a, a property in a business like this. And oftentimes, I guess I, I want this to be a positive statement, but it just costs a lot of money, you know, so people can start cutting corners, but where you would be tempted to cut a corner is the exact area where you should expand and invest because those are the areas they're going to make you stand out and that will, they will bring back to you revenue. So when you're speaking of this, I, it's, it's just wonderful. Most hardly anybody does that to have an elevated grill and that you can brand or color or whatever the thing is. Um, and then all of the variety of experiences that you just shared, it becomes a vehicle for that community. Again, for those, those moments that they will never forget. Cause that's where I met this person. And, yeah. and it could be, you know, they, I don't want to say they kill it, you cook it, but that's what keeps coming to my mind in those situations where they went out fishing or whatever, but you actually do it for them. People, they want to, it's like the, the whole term glamping, right? You want to have the adventure, but you don't want to suffer. So nobody wants to wait for 20 minutes and hope the coals all are evenly glowing. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe they do. Yeah. That's maybe not they my do, idea. You know? Yeah. I mean, but I you know. can like, that's the entry point, right? And, and then from right. there, you can like, you can really grow with it. And I think that's one thing that people need to understand is like, you don't have to jump in and do the, the big thing right away, you know, but if you are right. there and you want to explore it, like that's the first thing. I mean, you know, you're going to have, those things are going to look fantastic. And when you put those up on your website, you know, like showing your accommodation with something like that right off front, you're sending a very clear message to your prospective customers. Yes. Like we've anticipated what you need. You don't want to cook on a charcoal grill. We get it. You probably don't even right. cook on a charcoal grill when you're at home. You know, why do you want to do it when you're on vacation and you're way more active? You know, you don't have the data plan, like just come in, like we've got these things taken care of, you know, like that's what you're trying right. to express through f and is that you're anticipating their needs, you know? Exactly. And isn't it funny how we really do, the human brain just remembers the bad. Like I was thinking about a great meal I had and I really needed salt. There was like no salt and pepper on the table. That was such, like, I remember, I don't know, that comes, just came to my mind. People will remember <laughs> these really strange things and not the highlights. So every opportunity you have to differentiate yourself, and this is one of them. Okay. We have so much to talk about. So um, developing scalable 
partial or full service F and B programs. We started to touch on that a bit. Do you want to share a little bit about like how you work with that different different um, ways that you could actually come onto a, a, into a business and help? Partial, yeah, full, sure. There's so, so many variations on so that many. theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, part of it is just what we were kind of alluding to with you know developing yeah. some kind of retail presence is is you know maybe you don't want to invest in building a full service kitchen you know um there's certainly you know costs with that we totally understand it but what we think is really important is to explore food and beverage opportunities early on it's like when you're if, if you have the opportunity there's people out there listening to this that are thinking about developing you know a resort um do it in pre-development explore the potential in the community, you know, understand what the outlay is going to be, you know, that way you can set up the services that you might need on the property early on. You can run those things to the ground. You can make sure that you have the electricity you would need, et cetera. Right. So that should you grow into that, right. It's already there, you know, and the outlay is very minimal when you, when you figure that, you know, and then when you do determine food and beverage, there's so many ways you can go the food and beverage, like retail elements, are super successful in, in smaller operations where you have, you know, self-sufficient people. But if you build even the most basic, you know, um, kitchen setup, and it could be in a lot of destinations, it could be like what we talked about an outdoor kitchen with like a pergola over it that maybe only runs, you know, six or seven months of the year when you have fair weather, you know, that can be utilized by a third party operator, like a partner, a local chef or caterer to come in and do dinners, you know, and it could be as often as every weekend, we have some that run, you know, four or five days a week during high season where, you know, there's an organized dinner every night. And those are really, really successful. Um, and then you can scale from there, you know, once you get the basic structure, you don't have to buy $100,000 in equipment right up front, you know, you can kind of phase in and say, okay, we're going to set this up for what we consider in the business of finishing kitchen. And, and that allows a caterer to come in and know that they've got a licensed facility, right? That they can kind of come into, they can wash their dishes when they show up, they can, you know, heat their food or keep it warm and they've got tables to work on, you know, and, and then they can do something really special. And that gets into one thing that I also don't think people talk enough about in, in these resorts is the benefit of food and beverage when you're booking large events. It is essential, you know, there's so much money to be had in you know in the corporate retreat yes. world right now like since the oh work from home thing has taken off like companies are shedding their leases significantly and trying to find better ways for their employees to interact and and these retreats are incredible my um my wife's uh employer did this years ago uh two years ago and now all the money they they saved from their lease here in san francisco they now spend on twice a year retreats for their employees and they go to some places like this and they rent the whole thing out Fabulous. for a few days, you know, and this is an, you know, an exceptional opportunity for oh operators to really get great revenue and food and beverage. There is, you know, if you talk to anybody in the regular hospitality world, hotels, banquet revenue is, it's just so easy. It's very, it's a very good opportunity to, um, you know, provide a baseline for your resort in the early years, you know, you can book in advance, the revenues there, deposits, it really helps with cash flow. So we just think that there's so many things, we're never gonna cover it all in this podcast. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's just, there's just a lot of opportunity out there and, and you don't have to think, oh, I've got to build a restaurant, it's gonna cost me a million dollars. Like, this isn't that, you know, like there's a lot of yeah. solutions out there with, you know, um, food truck kitchens and these trailers and some of these, you know, container ship kitchen companies that are out there. And we also designed some, we got some designs for modular kitchens that we're doing also, which, you know, just kind of can adjoin any type of tent or cabin structure that you might have. There's just so much out there to, to, to explore. Yeah, this is really, I know we can't talk about all of it, but I do want to just shine a light on this aspect of what you bring to the table because, um, you know, when, when we might come to you with a client that I, I've done a lot of work, a lot of work with them on their vision and their guest journey and their story and and their brand and all of this. And you are so sensitive to that. Right. And the budget, I, I had a restaurant and I know that the first, I had no idea, like I would have completely failed if it weren't for the guy I happened to meet by divine providence 
that had opened six restaurants because the first thing you think is this is a, this is totally overwhelming and we don't tend to think of all these variations that you're presenting so so john you come and anybody that's listening it doesn't matter what your what level you are on your property he can understand your vision and your brand and carry it from there and say okay based on your budget and your property and your brand these are different options that that would add you know not only additional revenue but an incredible experience in simple ways you, so it, it's not like you have to to think all or nothing and you're so creative with that when i was listening to you share some things in i don't know one of our meetings i was just it's it's incredible um how sensitive you are to the client so i just want to shine a light on that so don't be afraid of f and b because people get afraid and then they do them the least instead of taking a step take a step in wherever you are and then you can always grow from there is that safe way to say it <laughs> absolutely absolutely you iterate you know just start small and yeah iterate, you know like that's one thing i think people a lot oh, of times now you they... froze a second i don't know if that's me or you okay like in, in my oh wait, will you say that again? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, iterate. Yeah. That's that's the phrase. Like that's what we use a lot. Is, is you need to iterate, right? Don't don't just come in with oh. the first idea. You know, from from the restaurant world, there's this old saying like Mike Tyson had. Uh, he said, "Everybody has a plan until you step in the ring and get punched in the face." Right? That's what it used to yeah. be like opening restaurants. You could spend years developing the perfect restaurant uh. for this location. You open the doors, and we used to always say, "Throw out your business plan on the way back." Because at that point, the customers will tell you what they want. And so we always yes. try to move in a very, sim like the simplest way is always the best, right? So find connections that are locally, find what's attractive to people in the community. That's one of the things that drove us into this market was just the authenticity that it allows for, right? We can do something super unique every single time. We don't have to like, cookie cutter it. We don't work off of these templates. We have data, we have all these things, but we just love the experience that it's just so fulfilling to connect an operator with, you know, a local bakery or local chefs or food truck companies or developing the stuff and managing alongside them. That's one of our greatest pleasures. Yeah. like just connecting on these things. It's so much fun. So much. Fun. Yeah, this and and if you're at a place in your business where I know some people can get because it can be overwhelming and you get to a point and you're like, why am I doing this again? This can be that injection that just reconnects you to why you're doing this. And it's about supporting local businesses too. Like there's just so much joy in every aspect of this. Um, I was going to ask you something. I forget what you just said. Cause anyway, let's go on to this. So, Oh, the question was why people might hesitate. <laughs> well, because it could be overwhelming, but I did want to ask you, because you shared at one point a formula for, for how to determine when to add like a, I don't know, you tell me like a more of a full blown operation. Can you chat a little bit about that? Because I think it's important. Sure. Well, we have what we call the Goldilocks zone. Um, and so that's like a geo couple couple things. Geographically, it's usually when you're between 30 and 100 miles of a population center. Now, that doesn't have to be like a huge city. It could be okay. like the largest close town. Like um, if we we're talking about Zion, we would use like St. George. And this is just top of mind. We use St. Sure. George as that reference, right? It's a pretty good town. So we would see that you have the best opportunity for success when you're within 30 to 100 miles. That means that you're gonna be far enough away from the options that it's con it's more convenient for guests to stay with your property than to drive out and find more options, right? But you're also close enough that you're gonna be able to receive the food product that you need, the supply frequency that's required. Yeah. And then the most important thing is the staff that you're gonna need, right? You need to be in proximity right. Uh, of a decent amount of population to staff your operations. Um, and then we like to see um, an ADR floor of about 150 to $200, you know, anything above that, you're in really good shape. That means people are tending to spend um, a certain amount and they expect to spend a certain amount of food and beverage in addition to that when they budget, right? So if you follow 
general hospitality norms and, and hotels and so forth, mm -hmm. you can you can almost bank on 20 to 40 percent of additional revenue based on your ADR for a full service food and beverage yeah. outlet, right? If you do it well. Um, and then key count, you need to have a minimum of 20, um, 20 keys on property. That's anything above that, we start to see options. Now, that doesn't mean like you go full bore restaurant, although we have clients who mm -hmm. have full uh, full scale restaurant with 13 keys, you know, but it's a premium location and they bring people, they allow people to come in from off property. So there's a lot of ways that you can, you know, slice it up. But generally, if you follow those, if you're within those kind of parameters, then we think you're a prime candidate for some type of elevated food and beverage. So that means it could be, you know, retail, it could be, you know, stocking a lot of really great products, working with a caterer that might drop off, you know, really high quality lunch, you know, uh, picnic lunch options for guests, or you might want to offer like really high quality grocery items for people to kind of cook on site, um, doing warm mm -hmm. breakfast. It could be anything simple like that. You know, you might start with just like a coffee bar and retail and have a caterer drop off some, you know, we call grab and go foods, you know, every couple of days, all the way to having a full service restaurant on site. Anything within those parameters usually is where we're starting from. Um, okay. So here's a question for you. Let's say, because this is happening a lot in the space right now. Let's say I own like an RV resort that, and I want to get on the bandwagon of adding cottages and glamping sites. I'm expanding. I have the room to expand. And I want to get out of that mindset that I'm only a, uh, you know, an RV resort. <clears throat> so I, I'm interested in F&B, but I'm se seasonal. And there's all these things to consider, right? So the biggest thing that would pop up in my head is how am I going to staff this? Like I can come to you and you can set everything up and, and on the scale that's appropriate for me. And we can work through the branding and all of that. But how am I going to staff that? Would it be internal staff? Is that something you can help with? Can you run the operation? Like what are my options around that? Sure. And that's, you know, like when we look at a property, one of the biggest things we look for, as I mentioned, was staff, right? You had to be in proximity to mm -hmm. have a market available to, to staff your restaurant. We do, uh, we yeah. are growing into management roles now in partnership with, with operators that we consult with. And that's one of the advantages that we saw. And we're trying to solve a problem that we noticed, you know, kind of early on was like, we come in, we would have this great program. We'd spend a lot of time setting it up, but then there was just, you know, the, the normal turnover, um, would cause a lot of hiccups in, in the systems. And we were noticing yeah. that they weren't performing well over time. And we want to always find options to support our customers um, to make sure they're, they're putting their best foot forward every day. So we now offer management services. We don't hire employees ourselves. So we, we don't have employees on site, but we will, we will manage that F and B, sure. the recruitment, the retention and the training, right? That's, that's really important. I think that's what you know, help set us apart is that we have such a dynamic team that has so much experience in developing elevated, you know, hospitality services that we can train really good people. And we think that if you treat people well, you provide them great, you know, great benefits themselves. You know, my um, old employer, uh, 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 the CEO of uh, our uh, restoration hardware, he had a great saying. He said, if I expect my customers to deliver first class service to my customers, or if I expect my employees to deliver first class service to my customers, I must first deliver first class service to my employees. You know, like you have yes. to take care of your employees. So, you know, recognizing the value that the employees have in your food and beverage program, like we said early on, the number of touch points they're going to have with your guests, these are really high value employees and you have to look at them as such. Don't think about it as like, we need to provide a minimum wage and a basic, you know, environment for them to work in. Look at them and try to find people that you think are going to have an outsized impact on your guests, right? Like you want people that are going to be interactive, connect, love where they are and what they're doing. You know, that's so much more important um, in hiring is the disposition of your employees rather than the skill set. We can teach them how to flip a burger, right? We can teach them how to make an espresso, but we can't teach people how to be genuine, sincere, love what they're doing and be compassionate to the people that they're working with and towards. So we think those are really important things when you talk about staffing. Yeah, this is a whole nother, this is where my heart is. This is a whole nother conversation that we should yeah. have one day. And I think, 
I mean, overall in hospitality, I think we tend to attract those types of people. Um, but it's like love cover it. What is it in the Bible? Something like love covereth a multitude of sins. It's true. And when you have the right people that like in my restaurant, when I had a, I had like a dinner theater and I would hope that something would go wrong because those opportunities are what allow your staff to shine. And I have had every business I've had, I don't know, it's the staff. And it is because I treat them as if they were a guest and they have no it, it's like you're training them with every interaction you have, how they are going to interact with others. It's just a trickle down effect. So the fact that you even brought that up is it just says so much about who you are, John, and I absolutely love it. And so imagine this person out there who's either developing, building, expanding, or you, you just are considering getting into this space when you have someone managing an asset like your F and B who understands how to manage your people according to your brand, but with the right hospitality kind of, um, I know Randy, my, my business partner always calls it the care gene. It's, it's having that as who you are and just how you interact. Like you are solving a lot of problems for people. Because you could come in, like you said, and, and have the right food and the right experiences. And then the person who delivers it, it just sneers at you. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter anymore. It's in the delivery. <laughs> like everything matters. So I, I just absolutely am thrilled that you brought that up. <laughs> uh, that's the, I mean, the, the added, that's the added spice to our conversation. <laughs> Yep. I mean, it's so, it's so true. I mean, there's not a, um, an experience I've had in a restaurant or any type of dining establishment the world over where poor service consistently, let me rephrase in every experience, poor service is yes. far more detractive than poor food, right? You can have food that's not great, or maybe it's mis misordered oh, yeah. or it just isn't but if you have a guest, a server who's going to connect with that guest and be sincere and apologize and make it right, it's so easy to gloss over that. People understand that there's a yeah. mistake. Oh, you know what? You know, we just, we ran out of this and I didn't know. I'm so sorry. You know, rather than someone like, we're all out. What do you want? You know, like, it's just that, it's just, <laughs> it just it's so true, yeah. but it's just that little bit, right? Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. it was always hard early on when I was a young chef to like, actually recognize that yes sometimes that server on the floor is far more valuable to the business than i am right because no matter how hard i work on the food if they don't deliver it in a friendly way and enjoy the time that they spend with that guest and help make that an additive experience then it doesn't matter how much effort i give or my team gives in the kitchen like it's just not going to be yeah. the same so we, we always look at that like you know, the people that we hire are so much more important than the quality of the food. I mean, we still want great quality food. Don't get me wrong. But like course, one of the first yeah. things is like we, when we get to that operational point, it's like we've got to have a really we always want a great training program. And we want to make sure that if we're not involved over the long term, that the operators really understand and whoever is managing that business for them day to day understands, you know, the ethos that we want to instill in our team. Um, that's delivering mm -hmm. those, those, those services. It's wonderful. Yes. And, and every, I mean, the food story, having them understand what you're doing in the kitchen and it's, it's really just, you know what it's, we all want the same thing, no matter what we're doing or who we are, whether we're a guest, we're all human beings and we're all looking for a better experience, more connection. So if, if it's a good thing or a bad thing that brings us together to connect, you know, it's, it's just the skill of the server understanding, oh, I get to connect more because something went wrong. That, that's an asset, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we're just, I think we're all just so many, many barriers are breaking down and those 
those breakdowns offer opportunities for us to build quality and connection and everything that that we want. So, and we can do it outside. Yeah. Right. Uh, one more. One more <laughs> it's thing. It's outdoor this, hospital. This triggered, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This triggered another story. Except you about, froze like, again. The interact. Oh. So now you're gonna have to say it twice. Okay. So this say, just jogged another really again. fun okay. story. So this is our, our veggie side story. So we had a project and it was an existing oh, yeah. full service operation um, on a resort and everybody's anonymous. So their identities can be uh, saved. Uh, but okay. <laughs> they came to us and said, hey, yeah. listen, we've, we've got this operation and, and you know, it, it's OK, but people aren't really spending as much money as we thought they would. Um, they just like they're ordering. They eat a bunch of sides and, you know, like our you know, we just, we don't feel like it's really doing really well. We want to find some better, you know, better menu options and so on and so forth. And so we started yeah. looking at some of their data on their point of sales system. And we did, we noticed like, okay, well, people eat a lot of side dishes, but their, their chuck cabbage is really low. And, but we just like, it, it pinged in our head one time. Like, oh, well, these are all vegetable sides that people are ordering. Like, oh, hey, well, what do your servers say about vegetable options? People have, because there's no vegetarian items on their menu. And like, well, I don't know, we, our, our staff kind of, you know, we've had trouble with staff and they're not really great. And, you know, um, you know, they turn over maybe once or twice, someone said they wanted some, some vegetarian food, but you know, it's not, not a significant demand. And we got in there and we started talking to some of the people that had been there a long time and like, oh yeah, people always ask for vegetarian food. There's so many vegetarians and vegans out there. <laughs> and we're like, oh, well, no wonder they're only ordering side, you know, side vegetables. That's all you have, you know, yeah. you have one salad and a bunch of, and a few vegetable sides. So it was like one little piece of like the chain, right? The uh, break in the chain where they weren't, they didn't have that trust amongst their staff to like provide feedback right. of what the guests were looking for amongst all the other, you know, challenges of the day, right? We understand there's a lot of things to manage in these properties, not, you know, outside of food and beverage, but, you know, having that trust and that connection with your employees to provide feedback and just recognize, oh, hey, You've yeah. got a lot of vegetarians that are showing up. You know, you, you've got people that really want to spend money in here, but you don't have the products available to them. We we put some vegetarian items on there, grew their salad section a couple items, you know, I mean, massage it, made no other real changes. And, you know, within months, it was like, you know, uh, significant, like it was 25% Black increase in their, their, their check wow. average. And, and then they started getting great feedback from customers, right? The customers weren't saying anything because it was just like, they were like we were talking about earlier. It was just a subtractive experience. Like, well, it's fine. They didn't have any vegetarian things. We we're in the middle of nowhere. We didn't expect it. But once you had it for them, people were like, oh my gosh, we went to this place. It's in the middle of nowhere. And they had vegetarian food for us. Like it was just like a, a huge difference in the, the feedback they got. And I mean, that was like one of our, you know, like we're really excited about that. That was just another solution that we you were able should to provide. Be. So, it's yeah. Yeah, you know, it's so it's so funny, isn't it? It's so simple. It's simple communication. And um, this is not a plug for what I do, but I can't I can't I can't help just mentioning that one of the things through that we do is a, we offer kind of a unique feedback opportunity for all kinds of resorts. Because it's like you said, they just never thought to really sit down and ask their staff. Well, they the staff, it doesn't mean that they couldn't come and tell you, but it doesn't matter enough to them. There's no incentive, right? So when somebody comes, a guest comes, <clears throat> how do we get feedback from them? We send them a survey, like after they left and after they're back on, okay, school starts tomorrow. Oh my gosh, my head's in a different place. So through Expitality, we do really unique um, feedback data gathering, and we'll actually go on site and interview people while they're on site and turn it into an experience that's branded for the, the business. And it becomes a, an asset for them. Um, and we get real feedback, like legit conversational, what's going on now feedback. And it's, what do you do with that, right? Well, we will tell you and help you with what to do with that. But look what you did with that. And it's only because a simple conversation, but we don't, we don't facilitate those. And it's the most value, 25%. Like that's a big yeah. deal. 
huge. <laughs> so huge. it always comes down to communicating and, and doing what's obvious. Absolutely. I you mean, know? it's like, it's, it's, it's tying these threads together, right? It was an operator who just said, well, we're going to do it, but just do this. And they didn't care enough and they didn't put enough effort in early on and they didn't iterate. They just opened the doors right. and they put what's on the menu and like all the other spots around the area, right? They put burgers and steaks and chicken and fish, right? And they just let it run and they didn't yeah. you know, have great connection to their management. The management didn't have great you know, relations with the staff. And so all these communication lines broke down and mm -hmm. they just were unsatisfied. Well, no one spends any money here. Well, there's, they want to, but you don't know how to, you know, connect with them and understand it, you know? So it, it, it's, it's really so many things. And you're right. When we're talking about this. I recognize how we're, you know, explaining just the complications in food and beverage, but that's where it's easy for us. Right. So we've been doing this only this right. for 20 plus years, you know, right. and our team yeah. is, you know, like they're all, you know, high quality operators, you know, chefs and service personnel and, and et cetera. And they love the outdoors, right? We're dispersed across the US in these places where we love to be out in this environment. We love connecting with people and sharing these connections. We love doing this kind of legwork to make connections in these communities that are pretty rural that you wouldn't think have, you know, great food options. And it turns out there's a lot of people there that are excited to do more because these clamping facilities or these experiential facilities are bringing a higher level of customer. And some of these operators yeah. like, listen, I can't, I can't do this food 365 days a year in my community because the residents can't afford to pay for it, but I'll do it for your guests. I'll bring it out there three times a week, or I'll do these dinners. Like they're willing to make that elevation in their operation because of they know course. they have a client and, and yeah, people don't think that great. way. They just look at the, the menu in this town and say, oh, well, everybody in this town eats, you know, fried fish sandwiches. So we'll just put one on our menu. Well, that's only because that's what the local community might be eating or whatever it is. But th there's opportunity to elevate the the operators in these communities, too, if you provide the right, exactly. you know, uh, opportunity for them. I love that. It, it, yeah, it's it's the stone soup methodology, right? Like it's it's wonderful. OK, so we have filled an hour. And wow. Wow. I yeah. know it was so much fun talking with yeah. you. It just, you're, you're, you're lovely and, and you have such a beautiful vision and service minded and the whole thing. So how would you like to end this? Do you have a, I don't know, an inspiring, everything you've shared is inspiring, but is there any, do you have any final words <laughs> mm. before we depart for now? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, you know, like I, I know that they're the food and beverage can a lot of times seem very expensive. Um, it can seem very complex and a lot of it is foreign to most operators in this space. Um, but all I can say is that, you know, it, it's, you don't have to be scared by the challenges. Like there are people that can help you through those challenges. And I will tell you firsthand that if you, you know, if you do it well and you start small and you're willing to iterate, um, you're going to find the right connection and the right level of service for your resort, for your customers. Um, you, 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 a lot of times it does help to have someone like us along to kind of hold your hand, guide you through the, the forest, so to speak. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it, it's an exceptional experience. And we feel like, you know, food and beverage really is um, what's going to distinguish operators going forward. You know, the space is getting more and more crowded every year yeah. and you no longer can you know, rest on the fact that you provide an exceptional accommodation. You need to now provide more amenities. And that goes beyond, you know, Egyptian cotton sheets and, you know, et cetera. Like <laughs> you need to offer people solutions. And, and I think food and beverage has just such an outside, outsized impact um, on the investment that you make. Perfect. How can people reach you? They want to reach out. Yeah, uh, outboundkitchen.com or john at outboundkitchen.com. Great. Thank you so much. It was such a yeah. pleasure. It was really fun. And we'll do this again and we'll talk about culture next time. Oh, sounds okay? great. I'm excited. Yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite things. So enjoy okay, your I'd beautiful sunny to. day out there. I'm yes, gonna go try and I, get outside I'll be here on Zoom calls all day, but it's beautiful. And, yeah. you know, I'm actually at this. This used to be a farm in Fort Collins and right behind me, this it's called Jessup farm. And this is a restaurant 
and in the and then there's a little coffee shop and there's a barber shop and some boutiques and another restaurant and a, a brew house all in the same old buildings but they've done some some simple things like the garden out back that they'll pluck the mint or or whatever the herbs are to cook with and and bring it over and put it in your salad and little things like that that just connect you to the the location and the history of a place um all of those things create everything we were talking about like you can do that on your property so call john call me get outside everybody before it snows okay Absolutely. all right <laughs> all right love